video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the color tools in Photoshop. So when you open up Photoshop, this is probably what your version will look like. Um, so there's a few different ways that you can use colors. I'm going to just quickly show you them in this video. So I'm just going to create a new template just to um, show you, be able to experiment with some colors, pick whatever. All right, so let's go to um, adding a shape. So when you add a shape, you can choose the fill color from the drop down menu up here. And you'll notice that I've got all of these really cool colors in here with really nice shades of different colors. I did not create all of these color swatches. Photoshop comes with swatches pre-installed. So if you go to your swatches menu, we can see all those same colors appear on the, um, on the right over here. So I prefer to pick a color from this menu because this one's a little bit squished. You can expand it out as well um, if you want to. So you can see all the colors that you have. So these colors are the ones that the main color scheme that I like to use. If you click this button here, this arrow that's pointing downwards, you can pick a different color swatch. So the one that I'm using is called this Pantone Plus Solid Coated. So if you want to use these same colors, um, then you can pick this one here. The, one, the reason I like this one is because it's really good for ombre or ombre, however you pronounce it, shades. So this one here, for example, we've got a light pink, a medium pink, and a hot pink. I love using three um, shades of the same color that makes a really nice pattern or um, a really nice background when you use different shades of the one color. So that's why I really like this collection. If you wanted to add another collection, you just click that button and choose whichever one that you wanted. Um, so let's go with Toyo 94 Color Finder. Just click it and it's going to come up with this message here. It's going to say replace them with this. You do not want to hit OK. If you hit OK, it's going to get rid of all the other swatches that you have in your menu. So if you've added a color, it will get rid of it and you won't be able to get it back. So just make sure you hit append. Append just means add. So it's going to add it to the bottom below the swatches. So if we click this bar and drag it down, we'll now see that we've got that color scheme added below. And these are all the swatches that are in that Toyo um, 94 Color Finder collection. So I love this color collection for rainbows. It's so nice. It's already got it already set up for you. Pinks, reds, oranges. And you can see that these colors look really good together. So I recommend just choosing something from the same column or close to it. So if I chose this pink, I'd probably choose an orange that's within a couple of columns, maybe not something all the way over here, and same deal because then it keeps sort of the shades of the same color together. Um, and if you hover over it with the eyedropper tool, you'll see that it comes up with the number or the code. So this one is Toyo002. Um, so if you wanted to come back and choose the color later on and you know what the color um, code is but you can't remember where the shade was exactly because some of these do look rather um, close similar shades, then you can just hover over it and then it will come up with the code and then you'll know that you've got the right one. So using the color swatches are really good if you're not sure where to start choosing a color combination if you're making something. Um, so they're a really good starting point for that. And if you wanted to, you can click this button here and choose Reset. So that will set it back to when you originally started using Photoshop. If you've added swatches, it's very important that you save the swatches first before you go and reset them. And I do recommend saving them anyway to back them up, especially if you've got all of the um, color swatches, if you've got a color chart that you use the same colors for each product um, and the customers can choose from only those colors. It, you, you can really quickly use just the swatches menu to find that color when you're creating something. Um, so make sure that you do save it so you back it up so you don't lose that work that you did in adding it to the swatches menu. Um, you can add as many of these as you want. I try to just keep it at just a couple um, and not have too many because it takes me forever to find what swatches that I want. It is pretty distinctive where one swatch menu starts or not. These are some of the colors that I added. Um, so these ones are just sort of like random colors that I liked. Um, but you can see that this collection starts here and then if I added another collection below it you can distinctly see where the swatches start and stop. Um, so yeah, I really like using those swatches. If you want to add a swatch to the menu over here, let's say that you found a color that you liked from the color wheel. So the other way you can pick a color or the color picker is to just click and it will come up with this uh, menu here. So you've probably seen a menu um, like this in Microsoft Word has a similar one when you choose a custom color. So basically you just click around until you find a color that you like or you can use these little scrolly bars here to make it a lighter shade of blue. Oh, I love light and dark blue. It looks really pretty. And then you can save the RGB code. 
So you could write this down if you wanted to, or the six digit hex code, or to make your life way easier, just hit add to swatches. You can name it whatever you want. So if you had um, a lot of sh uh, color shades, you'll notice if you look at my color chart in my shop, I have my numbered one to 150. So I've got 150 different colors that I use and they're all numbered. So number one, I'd call it number one here instead of swatch 26. If you had a few different shades, for example, on another one of my color charts for a different product range, I go from blue one to blue five, blue one being the lightest shade and then blue five being the darkest. So depending on whatever um, reference system you want to use, you can just type in whatever name that you want to call the swatch and hit OK. And we can just close out of that. And if we scroll down, we can see that we've got the color that we just added to the swatches menu. So now whenever we want to use that color, we can just come back and we can click and see how it's got blue one because that's what we labeled it. So now if we wanted to add a shape, we've got that color selected. It's in our recently used colors. You can also change the color by choosing the foreground color tool and it'll come up with that same color picker. And then you can just um, draw whatever you want and it'll fill it in blue. If you wanted to paint, you could just turn these layers off, go to the paint bucket tool. Um, if you right click, Photoshop has a secondary menu. So if yours is showing the gradient tool, just right click and choose paint bucket. Whenever you see this little arrow, it means there's a secondary menu. So for basically anything along Photoshop's main menu except the move tool has a secondary menu. For example, the shape tool, you can choose from a uh, rectangle with uh, rounded edges the ellipse tool will create an oval or a circle. The polygon tool you can use to create triangles, hexagons, etc. You choose the number of sides for the shape, the line tool, or the custom shape tool where you can download um, shape brushes and use them in Photoshop. These are some of the ones that I downloaded. So you could use the color for that one as well. So if I wanted a, let's go with a sparkly star, like diamond type shape. And we can pick any color that we want from the swatches menu or choose the color that we recently picked, which will be at the top here. I'm going to go with a pretty gold. And then you can choose the color that way and it'll fill with color. If you wanted to, you could um, change it up a bit so it didn't have any fill. It was just a hollow um, shape. And then you've got a border around the outside. So now I've just got a star that's got nothing in the middle, but it's got a nice colored border. You can increase the thickness of that by increasing the stroke. So the stroke is just the border around the shape. And you can also change it from a solid line to a dashed or a dotted line. Um, so you could do multiple layers of these if you press Control J and then Control T will resize. And if I brought this in a little bit, I could layer multiple stars. So I could have this one in a darker shade of yellow. So this one that we used was called... Um, that was a recent one. It was one of these ones. If we color match it, 253255. Five, five. So you can take note of the RGB code and increase the numbers a little bit, or you can just bring your slider across and choose a slightly darker shade that way, or you can pick something from the swatches. Um, just remember where you picked it from if you're using one of Photoshop swatches, not, for example, the swatches that you've added yourself. So if I make that a different shade of yellow, that one was a bit close. If I zoom in, we can see that we've got a lighter shade and a um, darker shade. Or you could just pick a completely different color. If we went with dark blue, that makes it more obvious. And then if you had multiple shapes, if you click on the first one, press shift and click on the second one, you can then align them so that they're even. Um, so that's pretty much how you use the shape tool. Um, all right, paint bucket, that's what I was going to show you. Sorry, I get sidetracked. Um, so let's create a new layer. Click on the paint bucket tool and then choose whatever color that you want or pick something from your swatches menu. Let's go with a pretty pink because I love pink. Let's go with this ooh, nice hot pink. I love a hot pink. And then just left click and it will fill your canvas with that color. If you've created a shape, for example, like this one and you want to change the color of it, you can just double left click here where it's got this little um, square icon and then you can change the color by using the color picker and it will do a live update so we'll show you exactly what that color is going to look like such a really handy feature in Photoshop so you can see exactly what it's going to look like without having to hit OK it just automatically updates it as you go with changing the color or you can pick a color from the swatches menu so let's go with a pretty blue and then double left click 
if we drag this across, just left click and drag to move it out of the way and then we can click that foreground color tool and it will find that um, color swatch for us again. That's basically how you change colors in Photoshop. So you can use the foreground or the background color. Basically whatever color you've got selected here in foreground is what will apply to your canvas. So if I wanted my um, background to be white, this background color, if I left click you'll notice that it fills with the blue. If you want it to be the white you need to click the arrow button and make that the foreground color and then left click and it will now make it white. You can then choose a different color. Um, remember if you're using the custom shape tool just make sure you right click and have paint bucket selected. Um, the only other things were choosing a fill color for a shape or choosing a color for the stroke and the swatches menu. Remember click this button here and you can add swatches, save them, etc. That's how you use the color tool in Photoshop. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I've got more tutorials on using Photoshop and making patterns in Photoshop. If you're interested in that, um, check out my e-course. It's called How to Make Patterns in Photoshop and Monetize Your Designs.